basically, um, let's just start from the beginning, right? You called me mm -hmm. because Dell gave you my phone number and I love yeah. Dell. Yeah. Um, Dell, um, for folks who are in LA, is Kern Price's wife. She's like a second mother to me. She is the wife of council member Kern Price, but in her own right, she's her own person and she does her own thing. And she um, ha asked Miss Gibson to give me a call. And I have to say, I was in the middle of working when I got this phone call, and my mind was completely someplace else. But you know what made me stop and listen to what you were saying to me was the pain in your voice. It really was the pain in your voice. And I had to really just stop everything I was doing to listen to you and to take notes because um, I could, really couldn't believe what I was hearing, right? And so normally my audience knows that I love to write, that I am a writer and I try to tell stories um, and encourage people to still read. But because of the nature of this situation, and I feel like I don't really have the time to do it justice in writing about it right now because of all my other um, things I got going on, I thought we could have a discussion about it. And, um, and maybe hopefully through that discussion, other folks can um, share it. And who knows, maybe somebody will know something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That would be awesome. So that is how we met. We don't even know each other. We just know each other through <laughs> Dell because Dell gave her my phone number. And the situation is, is that Miss Gibson's daughter is missing. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that I have noticed, a trend that I have noticed lately in South LA is that there are a lot of black women and young girls going missing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. I know that they don't always get the same attention that other people get when they're missing. They especially don't get that attention when they're full grown adults. For some reason, people think adults can't go missing when they're black women. But I'll tell you what, whenever a white woman goes missing, mm -hmm. whether she's an adult or a young lady, she could be in her forties. It's like, they, it's like pump the brakes. It's all over the news. It's all over the place. Right. right. And usually it's the husband, mm -hmm. um, but you True. know, it, you know, we, we hear about it, but when we go missing, we don't hear about it. And I think that what has happened or what is happening to your daughter is, you know, it is very scary oh, very. and I think people need to know about it. So we're going to get into it. Okay. And again, y'all, I would appreciate if you would share this and tell other people to tune in, particularly folks in LA. Because I know that I have a strong Facebook family. It is also nine o'clock at night, nine thirty at night. So some of them may not be on Facebook, so they'll they'll tune in later. But we're gonna have this conversation. It will be here for them to it will be here for them to watch. Okay. Uh -huh. So Tamika Newsom is your daughter, right? Right. And she's um 35 years old, right? Yes. And, and she was living in a transitional house um, that was um, under Lhasa. And Lhasa is a Los Angeles, let, let me make sure I say the whole, the whole name correctly. Uh, good thing I got my computer in front of me. I could just tippity type, <laughs> tippity type away. The Los Angeles Homeless Service Authority. She was living in a transitional house provided by LASA, the Los Angeles um, Homeless Service Authority. This house is on 111th place in between Maine and Broadway. Okay, so if any of this starts to sound familiar to anybody that's watching, definitely let me know. So... So uh, the last time you you talked to your daughter was January fifth. No. Well, the last time I talked to her and heard her voice was January the first. We brought in New Year's together over the phone. Okay, that's right. You said you brought in New Year's together, and then and then prior to that, you had saw her physically on the twenty eighth of December. Yes, that's right? the last time I saw her. Mm -hmm. Right, and so. You and your daughter have a really close relationship. Mm -hmm. 
And um, that was one of the things Dell shared with me. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's a very special thing. I don't have that type of relationship with my mother. Mm -hmm. But it seems, based on talking to you, like you and your daughter talk every day. Um, you know what else this reminds me of? Mm -hmm. It just it reminds me of another case we had where, where a young lady was arrested and she ended up in the jail and she also was very close with her mother. Her mother knew something was wrong when she didn't hear from her daughter on Easter. Yeah. yeah. So you haven't heard from your daughter. You haven't talked to her since the first. Mm -hmm. When did you first realize that something was wrong? Well, well we, we text on the second, we text on the third, we text on the fourth. And on the fourth, everything seemed normal. So the fifth went by, we didn't communicate. And then on the sixth, when I wanted to actually physically go and bring her some things that she left at my house for Christmas, that's when I knew something was wrong because I called and called, no answer. Text and text, no answer. And that was led me where I knew I need to go out there and physically see what was going on with the place that she lived in this transitional house. Right. So she was in this transitional house because she was waiting on, to get permanent housing. And yeah. as the name says, y'all transitional, mm -hmm. it's a place you kind of stay in between. And apparently it was a, it's a co-ed location mm -hmm. where both men and women cohabitate together. Yeah. And you were telling me earlier mm -hmm. that they had your daughter in a house with men. Yeah. Which she didn't even know she was going to be there with men. She was surprised and I was surprised. So when we walked in and I see men walking around sitting at the kitchen table, I was kind of shocked as well. Okay. And so, you know, again, this is a mother and a daughter who talk every day. Okay. A mother and a daughter who, if they, if they don't talk on the phone, they're texting each other. So there's always some sort of communication. And then all of a sudden it goes radio silent yes. on Tamika's mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. And so you reach out to the people who are running the transitional housing program, right? Yeah, I drove and out there um, two hours. From Victorville, right? Her, uh -huh, from Victorville. And I kept saying the whole time, I'm coming. I'm coming over there. I need to see your face. I need to hear your voice. And I was getting radio silence. Okay. And then you, you get there and what happens? I get there, and the woman who owned the house, um, Vicky Vicky Wade, I think her name is, she was there. That's the first time I ever seen her. First time I ever met her. And then was there were some other people there that live in the house. And I started asking, "Where's my daughter?" And then they started telling me all kind of other things, except "Where's my daughter?" So eventually, I want to see the room. We go upstairs. The room is empty. Every. Okay, so here's the thing. I want you to breathe. When you need to stop, stop, okay? <laughs> Don't feel like you have to keep going, all right? Mm -hmm. and, and don't mind me. I'm going to ask all the questions that I know the people watching are asking, right? Mm -hmm. Because I want people to have as much information as possible, especially my people in LA, because this is really, really important. And y'all haven't even heard the half of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So when you say that they're telling you everything but answering your question, what were they telling you? They were saying that um, the Miss Miss Vic, as she liked to be called, was saying that my daughter was asking her for money, but she didn't tell it like it was really truthfully. My daughter was asking for her refund back because my daughter had told me something was going on in that house that wasn't good for her. And she wanted to get out of there. And, I, and she also told one of the people who lives there that helps Miss Vic out the same thing. I want to leave. And so um, this, this young lady said, she said to my daughter, why don't you stay over here on the women's side? But whatever was going on on the other side was so bad that, that she didn't want no parts of that house anymore. And she made, wow. made it very well known that I want to leave. And, and that, they wouldn't give her back her money or anything to find another place. So I think it's important that folks know that they make you pay for transitional housing. 
Mm -hmm. that the transitional housing that they say is available to one and to all in the city is not free. They still make you pay for it, mm -hmm. um, which I find really interesting. That's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But I find that really interesting too, right? If people are supposed to be pulling themselves together, why are you taking a little bit of money that they have when you have a program that you are being paid for to house people in? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole nother conversation. So anyway, you go upstairs and her room is cleared out and empty. All her things but are gone. Everything is gone. Like she was ne everything never even there, gone. right? Like she was never even there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then, so I said, start asking questions. When did my daughter leave? Everybody had a different story. Ms. Vick said that my daughter was there on the 6th of January. And then later on, on, the story changed well because somebody told me Ms. Vic wasn't even at the house on the 6th of January and so when I started asking for camera footage that's when I received bits and pieces of camera footage that only showed my daughter going to her room at the top of her head and then one shot when she was at the end of the hall and so I asked them who saw my daughter move out of this house Nobody could tell me anything. They all had a different story. And so that kind of really disturbed me. So I noticed they had a lot of cameras in the house. So I asked them, can you pull that camera footage? So when she pulled the camera footage again, that's all we saw. Top of her head going in the room one time and the back of her leaving. She never produced any camera footage showing my daughter moving all her stuff out. And she had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Still don't but your daughter the would have told you if she had bounced out, though, right? She would have well, told you. She told me she wanted to leave. She right, she tell told me. you you she wanted mm -hmm. to leave, but exactly. she didn't tell you that she had a date that she was actually leaving and she was moving no. out, right? No, not at all. Mm -mm. Okay, and, and for folks who are just tuning in, this the the house is located on 111th Place in between Maine and Broadway. It is known as the White House. Mm -hmm. um, there are two houses on this property. One side is supposed to be for the women, and another side, I guess, is supposed to be for the men, right? Co ed. The co -ed. Co -ed. Co the other side is co ed. Okay. So, 111th between Main and Broadway. It's a lot going on down there. Let's not even fake the funk. For those of us that know, it's a lot going on over in that part of the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, then what happens next? Well, they couldn't get their stories together. So I, I said, I'm going to the police. So I went to the police department on 77th Division. And they told me, this is the only station that's open all night. I'm going to go ahead and take your report because no one else is open. And then we'll transfer it to Southeast Division. And so while I was there, I'm still texting my daughter. If you are okay, call me back. If you um, can get to a phone, call me back. I'm saying all these things, nothing was happening. So the officers start calling her phone. We didn't get a call back there. But uh, what I forgot to tell you is on the way to uh, that property, someone checked from my daughter's phone. Now my daughter, you know, she had some instant and abusive relationship. And so she had got to the point where she became very um, introverted. Yeah, introverted, that's the word I was looking for to where she didn't want to go outside. I would encourage her, let's go to the store. She want to sit in the car. When she's at home, she want to stay in her room. Um, I had just got her hair braided for her birthday and the hair was growing out and she was self-conscious about that. She had a vision problem and she needed new new kind of corrective lenses. So she said her eye was, was doing something weird. She didn't want nobody to see that. So she had a lot of things going on that I knew that she didn't go out of town. But this text popped up on my phone from her phone saying that she was out of town. And I knew that wasn't true. So I still continue the route to, to the White House. So I want to okay. that part because I have yeah, to that part. Yeah, and, and we're going to circle back at some point on mm -hmm. police stations not being open all night because that's a whole mm -hmm. other issue. Oh, oh, um, yeah. 77th being the only police station that's open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. But... 
And again, I mean, just, you know, for folks who are watching, I've heard the story, so I know the story, but I'm just asking her all these questions because I want you to hear the story from her. Yeah. Sure, I could have wrote about it, but I want you to hear it from this woman's mother herself, okay? So the officer starts calling. Mm -hmm. And then what? And no answer. And then he started telling me what to say to her. And so I start saying, if this is you, what's my middle name? And that went on for about 30, 40 minutes. No middle name was coming across. And then all of a sudden, my middle name comes up on my phone. And so now I'm thinking somebody done forced her to say it because it took too long for her to say it. And then it said, I told you I was out of town. I'll call you when I get back. And I said, something is fishy here. This is not you. I know you won't even get out the car to go to a store. So I know you're not out of town. And I said, you need to call me back in the next 10 minutes. If you don't call me back in the next 10 minutes, and this is the officer feeding me this information, what to say as well, then I know that you're in trouble, that you cannot call me back. Never did receive a call back. Never did. So we left, we left the police department and we filed the police uh, report at that time. And then I decided to try again. So I knew she had mail over there because Ms. Vic said she did. And so I said, you have mail. Do you want me to get it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, okay. So then what happens? Okay. So then that was the uh, January the 8th. And I had not text or talked to my daughter since January the 4th. So now that the police are supposed to be handling this, they called my phone that night on the 8th several times asking me who her carrier was. Um, did I know if she had find my phone on her, uh, on her phone, um, what type of phone she had. I knew it was Android. I knew the last time I took her to get a phone, it was T-Mobile. That could have changed. And um, and I don't know about the find my phone because I have an iPhone. And yeah. so, so they said, okay, they got off the phone. And then I didn't hear nothing else until the 13th of January. And on the 13th of January, it wasn't the police calling my phone. It was one of the females who live over at the house that she stayed on. And she was frantic. You know, I'm gonna try to stay cool. When I talk about you this. do what you got to do. Look, you do what you have to do. I know that this is a very hard conversation for you to have. And like I said, if you have to stop and you have to breathe and you have to get your thoughts together, you do that. No, I'm not pushing you. I want okay. you to tell this story in your own time and in your own way. Okay. So, so the young lady called my phone. And she started, because I got numbers when I was there at this house of some of the people who stayed there, two females in particular. And she, when she called me, she was frantic. And, 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 and I said, what's the matter? And she kept saying, did you get the text? Did you get the text? And I said, no, I didn't get the text. I said, send it to me. So she sent me the text. Mm -hmm. And the text said, she's dead. And, mm -hmm. The girl said, who's dead? Oh, what the F? Who's dead? And they wrote it back. The person that was the, the roommate, not the roommate. I wish I could read it to you, but now I'm trying to remember my memory. I have it in front of me. Can you read it, please? I do. Okay. I can. Please. Um, girl, you got me about to cry. Oh, this. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's okay. But it, you know, hold on, y'all. Um, my computer went to sleep, so I had to wake it up. Okay, so it says you want you talk about the first text, yeah, right? The one that says she's dead, and that okay. was coming from my daughter's phone. I see it. Okay, so the text message says she's dead mm -hmm. at seven twenty nine. Mm -hmm. Then the the lady who lives in the house with her responds what the fuck mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is this who's dead mm -hmm. right You're right and then they respond again and they say she's dead her body is in a river mm -hmm. 
And then I, you know, they say, because they're talking to her, right? They're, they're talking, talking to, to the lady who lives okay. in the house. Yeah. So then the so then these people, because they gotta, you know, again, they, they apparently know something because this language that they use, right? Mm -hmm. Your tenant who is missing, you guys treated her badly. Now she is in a river. We ditched her phone. Mm -hmm. Thursday at 9.33. Yes. Um, and then I get, was it you or her? Someone text Tamika, why are you playing these games? It's not cool. That was the same female. The police told okay. the female, don't text Tamika's phone anymore. But she said it was so um, scary for her and she was so nervous that she wanted to try to get communication with Tamika, even though the police said don't. So she texts that um, to make, uh, what was it saying again? It, at 1025, she, on, um, I think this is Friday, yeah. she texts, Tamika, why are you playing mm -hmm. these games? It's not cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then at 1028, three minutes later, they respond, she's dead, bitch. Mm -hmm. And then she says, who's, no, no, I'm reading this other text, but mm -hmm. yeah, it says she's dead, bitch. And then it says, Will you attend the funeral once they find her body? The yeah. police know you and your home are the true criminals. She went into the wrong hands. Now they killed her. Mm -hmm. Cartels, have a good day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you guys hear that? I, I, I really want you guys to, to listen and to talk about this and to share this. This is a woman who went to a transitional house in South Los Angeles on 111th place between Maine and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And she went missing. No one at the house can seem to tell her mother yep. where she is. Her things have just disappeared out of her room. And it's not like she didn't have things. She had a lot of things there, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. tend to have things where we are and they just completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she gets a text that says that she's dead mm -hmm. and that she's in a river in Mexico yeah. and that it was the house mm -hmm. that there's, there's something nefarious going on at the house mm -hmm. and it has to do with the house. And that is why she was taken and she was killed. Mm -hmm. This is what this mother is getting in text messages from her daughter's phone, yeah. from someone else texting. And for those of us who text with people every single day, we know when it's not that person texting us, right? Exactly. Like, for example, I think if I text my dad and said, hi, Pa, how are you? He would probably know that is definitely not Jasmine because yeah. I don't even use that word. I don't yes. call my dad Pa, right? Mm -hmm. Or Pop or anything like that. Yeah. So it's really, it's not that, it's not that hard when you talk to someone every single day to, to know that something is wrong. Like, hey, this doesn't seem, this seems a little off. This person yeah. doesn't usually talk to me like this or they, or they respond. But the fact that you are getting messages that is that are saying that your daughter is dead in a river in Mexico yeah. and it has something to do with the house mm -hmm. is absolutely frightening. They go on to say she was taken to Mexico mm -hmm. and dumped in a river. All we can tell you. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's it. Mm -hmm. And here, here there we, we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They start saying stuff to the effect of um, uh, um, something happened bad to her have the house investigated they know more and that and i and i kept trying to feed back to them and i said no you're going to jail i said you're an accessory now and this person said i didn't kill her they did and i said who is they the group and they said the men and lady they know and they talking just like i'm talking to you the man the men and lady they know um, have the White House investigated. They did, did something bad. And that's exactly the way they were saying it. And it's a lot more to it. And I kept saying, you know, you need to tell me, where is she? Where is she? And they said, um, ask the House. They know. That's why they, they moved her things. And I said, wait a minute. 
they told me my daughter moved my her own things, right? And when I asked them to show me the camera footage, because they got cameras everywhere, they could not produce a piece of footage that showed her moving her things out. Right. An excerpt here and the excerpt there. I have ring cameras. I have eight ring cameras. I played with them cameras to see what they were talking about. Nothing they talking about is true. So I, I called her on Sunday. I said, show me the camera that's in the kitchen because I saw a camera in the kitchen. That's the one that you can see a man in the kitchen and you see somebody come up to the top of the stairs and it cuts off at the top of their hat on their hood. And that's it. And I said, where's the rest? My daughter has a lot of things. I even got the picture of her things. Her closet was full of things. And then the lady told me, well, maybe that's the day that they were changing the batteries in the cameras. And I said, well, wouldn't that be a coincidence? Every time my daughter was supposed to have moved in that house, the cameras didn't have batteries. You got several cameras. It's just not making sense to me. Let me see if I can show the picture from my computer of her okay. stuff and okay. then what the room looks like okay um i'm gonna see if if it works um hold on okay okay y'all so this is her stuff right mm -hmm. you see her stuff in the closet right this is all of her things mm -hmm. right this is li literally a picture of her stuff in the closet and yes. then this is what the room looked like when you went in there yeah, like was, she was, was never even there. Five. Like nobody was ever even in that room. Mm -hmm. You guys see that? And, and just was, so yeah, and just so you know, I just want I, I have to hide some phone numbers. I don't want everybody looking at phone numbers. Mm -hmm. But this is literally I have the text messages. Yeah, like I have the text messages. That's so, true. um. You know, th there is definitely something going on. It is January 23rd. Mm -hmm. It is January 23rd. We ain't seen this on ABC, KTLA, CNN. We ain't read about it in the LA Times. No. Nope. And the way that you are, the way that the people are texting, to me, it seems like someone whose English is a second language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That English, yeah. the way that they, the, the way the words are typed, like the, it's, it's almost like English is their second language, right? Like that, that the they, tone. you know, they right. know a little, they know enough English to, to get mm -hmm. by, but they don't use cer certain things in the right um, syntax, the way that it should be. And, you know, that's another reason why I'm just like, well, maybe it, this does have something to do with cartels or Mexico. Mm -hmm. But I know that trafficking is a huge issue in that part of town. Yeah. And you, as we were discussing earlier, that there was talk about that that house having mm -hmm. um, to do with trafficking of, of women. Yeah. And, you know, I am... So when you are houseless, when you are trying to put your life together, when you are just looking for some place to lay your head at night, the last thing you want to have to worry about is being hurt, being trafficked, being disappeared, right? Yeah. yeah. And these programs are supposed to keep our women safe. Yeah. They are supposed to keep us safe until we get to the next stage in our journey. Right? right. There is no reason why your daughter should be missing right now. And no one at that house has any answers. Exactly. That's the first, that's the first suspect thing right there. Mm -hmm. That's because I'm going to tell you this. If somebody was staying in my house and mm -hmm. they got up and left, I would be able to say, oh, they left at eight o'clock on Friday. Yeah. Or whatever. I would know when they left. I may not know where they were going or whatever. Right. But I might. I would know when they left. The fact that they have all these cameras, and I yeah. know they have cameras in these places because I've been to some of these transitional housing places, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, yes, they have cameras because of all the different people that stay in these places. It's like more of a safety precaution or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have all these cameras, but you cannot produce any footage. Nope. And the footage nope. that you produce is doctored just to the point where 
it's just enough. Like you can yeah. see the top of her head. Top of the that head. is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. How does the person texting you know that her stuff is um, not there anymore? That's another. That's a. How would they know that her stuff is there? That's what I said. And they said, and you can read it because you got it there. You can read it and you can see the exact words. That's why they took her stuff out. And now I'm being told by the, the woman who owned the house is she took her own stuff out. Okay, where's the proof? Now, they, the, the camera footage is showing a man in the kitchen. Why don't it show more of what my daughter was supposed to have done? If you got him for this long period of time, as soon as my daughter come up, it's supposed to be her. You see the top of uh, her hat on her jacket, and that's it. And she tell me that's all the footage she has. And I'm like, something is not right. And then that night, what made me really want to go to the police is, Ms. Vick said she saw my daughter's things in the room on the 6th of January, right? Well, later, when I started asking for camera footage, she changed her story. And she said, well, maybe it was the first or the second that I was over there. Well, my daughter supposedly, from the little footage she sent, where one one piece of it is showing the back of her. They said, oh, it looks like she got a bag in her hand. Okay, show me more. She came over to my house and she had a bag of dirty clothes that she wanted to wash. So how do we not know it was that day? But you have nothing else. Nothing. When she got a whole room full of stuff. And then I said, she had a red suitcase. The woman told me, no, she didn't. Well, thank God somebody sent me that picture because it shows her red suitcase and all her things. Oh, I'm looking right at the red suitcase. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, she said. Let's she let's know. let's look at the red suitcase, y'all. Mm -hmm. Here's the red suitcase. Yes. yes. And you would have to make several trips in and out the house with that stuff, and the camera should have caught her every time. But for some reason, there's no camera footage to that, which which I really don't understand. And nobody could tell me anything different. You said you saw her stuff in that room on January the sixth. January sixth. According to you, once I started asking camera footage, the little footage you gave me that you said was her leaving, that was January the 5th. I have not heard from her since January the 4th. So all of a sudden, the day she leave your house, the 6th, I'm trying to reach her, and I have not been able to reach her since that day. So it's just not adding up to me. And then the, the people who text me said that there's illegal business going on at that house, that they're trafficking in that house. And so when I talked to Miss Vic on Sunday that just passed, she said out of the blue, the girls were talk talking about trafficking. And I said, what girls? And she said, the girls in the house. I said, what are they saying? Oh, I don't know. They were just talking about it. So I immediately called one of the girls in the house and I said, hey, can you tell me a little bit about the trafficking? Well, it's a lot of that going on in this neighborhood. You just got to be careful. And the guys are trying to trick you and give you a card and and, and try to um, have you smell different things. And, and then they try to kidnap you by doing that and, and stuff like that. But I said, that sure is a coincidence. This text said the house is tra trafficking. And then she tell me she hear her, her girls in the house talking about trafficking. So that kind of threw me for a loop as well. Let me show everybody. Oh, you texted it to me. Let me. Show. And I wish I would have sent, sent you the camera footage because I got the camera footage that's supposed oh, to be. Oh, you can still send it to me. I'm not going anywhere. You okay. can send it to me whenever you feel like it. I am. Hold, I'm just trying. You text the flyer to me, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just looking looking for it. Okay, I just want to show people the flyer. Okay. This is what she looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to post this on my page, y'all. So okay. don't worry if you couldn't make out the information. I'm going to post it. Okay. But this is some serious stuff, you guys. Oh, yeah. This is, oh, yeah. again, like I said, we have a lot of Black women that are going missing in South L.A. And mm -hmm. no one seems to give a damn, mm -hmm. aside from their family and friends. And 
it's too many of them going missing. And we know that trafficking is a real serious thing. And trafficking does not discriminate against you, no matter how old you are. If they want you, they want you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this doesn't make sense. And I'm just going to rewind it one more time for folks who just got on here. It is a young lady. She's, what, 35, yeah, right? Just turned who's, 35 December. Who's living in a transitional house um, that was either provided or recommended by or funded by LASA. The Los no, Angeles funded Homeless. Funded by LASA. Funded by, and recommended. And recommended. And, okay. Los mm -hmm. Angeles Homeless Service Authority. Mm -hmm. She has been missing since January 4th at least, okay? Mm -hmm. And today is January 5th. Mm -hmm. And today is January 23rd. Yeah. The people who run the house are um, seem to be less than truthful about what happened. Her belongings have disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then out of the blue, her, her one of the people in the house start, got a text message that said she was dead. And mm -hmm. then you started getting text messages from her phone saying that she's dead mm -hmm. and that her body is in a river in Mexico Yes, and that it has something to do with cartels mm -hmm. and the house and trafficking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Y'all, we have got to get to the bottom of this yes. one way or another. We have mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of this because there are other women then who are in danger, who are living in that house. At There's the end of the of day, there, there are house. other people who are in danger then, right? Mm -hmm. Because that house houses a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and so if trafficking is going on there, then um, I don't, you know, your daughter wouldn't be the first or the last, right? There would be mm -hmm. other potential victims. But we have got to find out what, what is going on because yeah. I am not going to be able to sleep tonight myself. Mm -hmm. Like, this is really... I mean, I could not imagine what you are going through. And honestly, my heart really goes out to you, which is why I dropped everything I was doing yeah, to figure sure. out how to get the word out about this. And when I we get off of here, I'm going to get on Twitter and I'm going to start talking about it too, yeah, because yeah. the police should be giving this more attention. The LAPD mm -hmm. should be giving this more attention and we should be talking about this. And I need y'all to share this story with other people. This woman's daughter is missing and she should not be missing. Exactly. And I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to know where, whether your daughter is alive or dead. You just want to know what happened to your yeah. daughter and, and where I your daughter her, is. I want her home. Yes. Yeah. Right. I so want her home. wherever she is, I want her home. So I'm also going to need, because, you know, y'all love to send me little DMs and drop me little hints and tell me something. If y'all know something that's going on with that property on 111th place in between Maine and Broadway, y'all also need to let me know. If you know something about Miss Vicky who is running that place, y'all need to let me know. Yeah. If you know people who you think might know what's going on over there, you need to hit them up and see what's going on. Yeah. Because we have a woman who is missing. Mm -hmm. We have people playing with her phone, texting her mother, telling her that her mother is dead. Mm -hmm. Her daughter. I'm sorry, that her daughter is dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to find out what is going on. January 23rd, January 5th to January 23rd. That's a long time to be missing. Still haven't heard from a detective. No detective has called me as of yet. And when well, I we, first... Okay. We're going to get that fixed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm waiting. And, and, and somebody still has her phone and it's still on. It's still on. They said they ditched it, but I call it every day. All my friends and family call it every day. And it'll ring two times and then it'll go to voicemail. So I think somebody's still using her phone. So I told the police to ping the phone and they told me they did. But then I don't think that's true. That's not true. Because they should know where, where that phone is. And that at least tell us where the last place the phone was and who has it. And then that might be can lead us to wherever she is. You know, because I don't want to believe she did in the river. That I don't want to believe. Yeah. And I, you know what? I think I will go ahead and take you up on your suggestion. We are. Do you have Instagram? Yeah. On your phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, we are going to leave from Facebook now and have this conversation on Instagram. Okay. I think it is. I, I think I have it with, if you can do it, I can do it. Sis. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have this conversation again, y'all over on Instagram for my okay. Instagram family, because different platforms, different audiences, mm -hmm. and we need people looking for Tamika Newsom. Yes. I'm going to post the missing flyer on my page okay. so y'all can share that. Um, and if you all, all want to um, join in the conversation, we're going to hop off of here and we're going to hop on to Instagram mm -hmm. and have the same conversation um, for folks from my audience on Instagram. But I appreciate everybody who is watching. Remember, her name is Tamika Newsom. She went missing from 111th place in between Maine and Broadway from a LASA funded transitional housing um, uh, from a, a loss of funded traditional uh, housing program. Mm -hmm. um, these programs that are supposed to keep us safe until we get into permanent housing. Yeah. Uh, and we need, you're right, you're right, Tanisha, we need to find Tamika right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We need to find her right. I need the same attention for Tamika as them Idaho murder yeah. um, girls yeah. that were yeah. murdered got. The same national attention that those Idaho college students got are the, yeah. is, is exactly what should be given to this situation, especially given the text messages that came from her phone. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then after they ditched her phone, then they start calling from other numbers, which I think are fake numbers because I heard you can get fake numbers oh. from an app. You can do that real easy. Yeah. That's Real where easy. the next one was coming from. And the reason I started getting texts, because I wasn't getting texts at first. It was the lady who owned the property and a girl who lives on the property that was getting texts. I started getting texts when that last text came through that said they took her to Mexico and they dumped her body in the river. I called the number. It was a 213 number and I called it. And then as soon as I called that number, then they started texting me with all these texts about the house and 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 that they hurt her and they know all these things that's when i started getting the text yeah and there was one creepy text too they apparently went into her phone and saw a conversation you had had with mm -hmm. your daughter and then tried to use that to make it i, I don't know what they thought they were going to accomplish by doing that i i really I don't, don't know i don't know but but yeah, so y'all, I need y'all to help me. We need to find Tamika. We need to hashtag Please. Tamika Newsome. Hashtag yeah. Tamika Newsome. I am going to put the flyer up on my page and I need all of y'all to share it. And we can we can definitely find her. My Facebook family and community is way too big. Yeah. We, we I know we all know a little bit of everybody okay. over here in Los Angeles. And okay. so we need to make this happen because I'm tired of seeing posts. Um, from family members talking about their loved one who is usually a black female is missing mm -hmm. from South LA. I don't know what the hell is going on. Well, I do know what the hell is going on. And um, so I'm a, my audience knows that I keep it real. When I do, I don't do lives a lot. I've done a, so many lives in the past 24 hours. Lord have mercy. But <laughs> when I do do lives, it's usually because it's an important situation. Yes. The problem is we do have a trafficking issue in South LA mm -hmm. and, and not enough is being done about it. Yeah. They need to address trafficking like they're trying to address fentanyl. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. they're trying to address opioids. Mm -hmm. That's how they need to be. That's the level of energy. That's the same energy I'd like to see them give to the issue of trafficking in South Los Angeles. Yeah. It is really bad mm -hmm. it is bad it is yes are there are there are there young women who are willingly engaging in it absolutely there are there are some that were groomed and then there were some that were kidnapped mm -hmm. there were some yeah. that were taken against their will that yeah. is really happening here in south la yeah. that is a real thing y'all and it doesn't get the attention it doesn't get the specials mm -hmm. on the news in the way that it should particularly as it relates to black women. Yeah. And I have to tell you that 
I have seen with, with my own eyes when I, I remember when a young girl went missing last year and because the police knew that she was engaging in um, sex work, they didn't give her disappearance the attention that it deserved. And if I recall correctly, and you know, my folks will will correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I think she's still missing. Oh wow! Uh, her name was Winter, I believe, and I think she's still missing. Wow. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So <sighs> it's a lot to unpack, y'all. Um, on Instagram, I'm Hello Jasmine. So we're going to jump off of here and um, do, you, do you think you have it in you to do it again? Yeah, and I want to send you some of the video footage that, that was sent to me. Yeah, please do send mm -hmm. that over to me. I'm going to um, hop on to um, Instagram and then you have to um, let's see, you need to I gotta, I gotta, I'm, we'll get off. I'll call you so I can add you on my um, IG so I can bring you into the conversation. And we'll, okay. we'll do this again. Okay. So if y'all want to come over there with mm -hmm. us, we're going to go on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm Hello Jasmine. I appreciate y'all for indulging us in this conversation. I told you it was going to be an important conversation yeah. and that, um, and that I was going to need your help. So we definitely need your help. Hashtag Tamika Newsom. We need to find Tamika Newsom, y'all. Yes, this please. is a serious issue. We need yes. to find her. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for everyone that's on.